This sometimes. Oh. How you know Shitty? Me? What? I used to work with Shitty Pete. You know, trucking. Well, no, five years back. You know. There's many mysteries around Benny, and there's there's many things that I've sort of filled in for myself. But essentially, Benny's a a young guy who has fallen out with his family, and uh, his father passed away, and. I believe he had some sort of trauma in his past that's led to him becoming a sort of lone wolf. Danny Lyons, the soft bones. Right, I'm so glad you did <laughs> There was just something very kind of confident and unaware about the way she was always poised in images, which I loved, you know, there, were, there was no kind of self-awareness and almost kind of masculine, but then still very feminine in that her, her hair's done and her nails, like in, in, she always had a red nail and in a few of the images she was kind of checking them and yeah, so they, there was kind of those beats that felt very clear and important. You know, except for meeting him, uh, you know, two months before I went to the picnic and I had my tool. Give him a crack. You know, for one. Yeah, exactly. Like, because it's the last. Because it's kind of like, okay. Like, you couldn't even take a second to regret, but then it's like, and then you go in for the stick, you know? The photos are their own thing. And then the transcriptions are their own thing as well. Because the transcriptions are these really, mm, not grotesque, but uh, they're dark stories, a lot of them are, you know? And then these photos though are like very romantic in terms of uh, the images that he has of the, these people. Um, and so, you know, it, he, which also I think tracks with what we were kind of saying. I think, you know, for Danny, it's like, he can't help but like fall in love with his subjects, if you will. So a free shot and then a, basically another free shot. Yeah, it's great. Just keep it, try to keep it going a little bit longer. Like after she says, okay, okay, um, maybe we could come up with some things, right? Okay, but just be wide your back to Dolly's movie. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that looks great. Look great. Did you feel anything on your back? No, I felt great. Spot? Perfect spot. That was awesome. Oh, shit, we dented it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you were supposed to. It's all good. Oh, we were? So we got many to work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's all you did. Let's go again. Reset. I'm so glad we're going to talk about these vests because this is insane when you hear what had to be done. Every single patch has to be cleared for clearances, for legal reasons. So we had to make them all. And graphic, like we had to first design them, then get them made, then age them, then sew them on, then age it again. Every single one. So even these, we had multiples made. So I'm Carl, but Shitty Pete out there? Yeah, he rides with us sometimes. How you know Shitty? Oh, yeah, I'm basically just looking for a reason to, you know, have me down there. We, you can do it for anything. I'd rather risk me. It's up to you. It's easy to make up. But I think it would be scary. It already looks like. My dream would be for this to go for deer, yep. as let it just be dirty of him grabbing it, okay. right? Yeah. That's that. Oh Austin actually came first. So I have to give credit to Brian Cavanaugh Jones, my producing partner. Um, the script has started to circulate, and uh, I think we got an incoming call from Austin's team. At this point, Elvis had not been released. Uh, in fact, there hadn't even been a trailer out, but the week that I was supposed to meet Austin, the trailer came out. And I remember looking at it thinking, okay, like 
this guy's doing something in this film. Um, of course, we didn't know to what degree yet, but you could just look at that trailer and say, well, this guy went places for this, for this part. And so on one of my rare trips out to LA, we set up a meeting, it was at a restaurant, and I walked outside uh, to greet him. And this tall guy walks up and holds his hand out. And I just immediately was struck by the fact that this is one of the most beautiful human beings I'd ever seen. Um, he's got this deep voice, he's very polite, he's very sweet, he's very humble. Um, and he was very flattering, he gave me a lot of compliments. All of these are in the plus column. And, uh, and I just sat there kind of, you know, visiting with him. And it was undeniable that, that this was a movie star. Well, that's good. Pretty good. And then Cockroach joins in and they all kind of turn around. Sorry. These guys are going to lead, and they're going to come in this direction. <laughs> <laughs> so that's nut. <laughs> and there it goes. Here goes transmission. All right, coming your way, Liam. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> what are you guys calling yourself? Rogues. Gary Rogues. How many guys you got? <laughs> yeah, Springfield is 66. So. Jeff and I had talked about this a lot. Um, we have to be very careful with the motorcycles to see certain parts of them. There's a few motorcycles that actually have a few things that might overlap in the later years. So the motorcycles that we have here, we're very careful not to have anything that was, we can, any parts that we can see that are from the 70s. There's, like I say, Harley Davidson, there's some parts on these motorcycles that go from 65 to 80 something. You, it's all the same stuff or 66 or. A lot of that is, yeah, actually talking to my family in that voice, you know, and, and talking to people at a coffee shop. And, uh, and at first you feel funny, you feel kind of like an imposter. And then, and then with time, then it ends up, um, it ends up just feeling like this is how I talk. And, and then you're not having to translate it. And then that's one last thing you have to think about when you're on set, because there's everything on set is like trying to distract you. There's a camera there, there's people there, there's people talking. You got to remember where the lighting is and where your mark is and everything. So as much as you can stack the deck, I find to not have to think about things and just be able to be alive, that's, that's the goal. What do I need to think for? Yeah, you and me, kid. But you're gonna, you're it? gonna pan oh, into it. it. Yeah. Okay. So they're all gonna be coming at you. Boom. Hit, 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 and then we're gonna run it, run it through the fake punch. You got it. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, let's just do that. Uh, I think with the action, we might go to yeah. one more. I mean, yes. it would just be all about the speed of this. Let's so do one more. Swing it a little quicker. Reset. Good. I remember my first day, I, um, I had no dialogue and we were all kind of sat around a campfire and it was a night shoot and it was like three o'clock in the morning and you know everyone was freezing cold and um, Michael Shannon had like two pages of dialogue and I remember like watching him for the first time and then just kind of looking around and all of us were just like, well, <laughs> like we can all just go home. Like, it was incredible. It was like a masterclass, you know? And I, I was sat next to Austin and I was like, you know, we were kind of saying, you know, from now on, I'm just gonna think, what would Michael Shannon do? Whenever I come to a scene, like just think, what would Michael Shannon do? You, you rode out all the way out here like that? It's 
strapped it to the bike. He needs it because his leg is broke. Hey, buddy. Hey, kid. You and me, you crazy fuck. And you guys, let's try one where you guys actually, you guys are actually crossing in front of the dial, Dolly. Everybody else moves in behind. Let's see how that goes. Jeff is so laid back and easy. Uh, and I think like genuinely excited for whatever's gonna happen. Um, you know, he doesn't like to rehearse. He likes to just shoot it, which I think is great. Cause it's like, oh yeah, fine. Whatever, you know, we'll see what happens. And we're all figuring it out. And, the great thing is, is for the most part, it's hard because usually you're running short on time and you're like, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. But you know, we've actually had a lot of moments here where we've been fortunate enough to really take our time and do a lot of takes of things. And that's allowed us, at least as actors, to, I think, show up fresh and maybe not have all the answers and start to figure it out together. Two inch valves, all ported in the lead, and uh, I... Would it help if I walked in with it yeah. to, to kind of converge with them? Because I, I feel like, because otherwise I feel. All right, guys, a lot of energy and action. Have you been here for a long time? Okay, shit. You guys, come on. Yeah. To hand tool and hand make all of the biker vests. You know, I think had it been a movie with like quadruple the budget and more people, we would have sort of half manufactured them and I think it wouldn't have looked as real and realistic. It was all, it was hand done by some elves. Yeah, so it's, I guess you're actually kind of- I'm yeah, yeah. Prop that. This idea that there was a specific thing that, that popped up in a specific place at a specific time, and now it's gone forever. Um, that felt beautiful to me, it felt a little sad, um, but but certainly nostalgic. And I loved the idea that you could have something so potent and so vibrant as it's represented in these photographs that then just is gone. We're gonna go up, up to the truck. Okay. okay. So I kinda need a special to start, which is... Austin Butler is, is on the motorcycle constantly in the movie, which is fine with me, and he loves it. Um, in fact, I had found a motorcycle I was going to buy recently, and uh, on one of our trips to some barbecue place with everybody that we weren't supposed to be on, um, Austin and I started talking, and uh, my buddy Oliver was here visiting, and he was heading over to a swap meet over in North Carolina, and I made a deal with the guy to bring that bike, and. I uh, went and took some money out of my bank account, paid for that bike so Austin could have, and Austin's like, I want it, I want it. And so I got, I, I pretty much bought a bike for Austin, I'm not sure yeah, he I wanted it. Um, <laughs> but um, his bike is really cool. It's, it's a 66 FLH, a lot like the bike. The bike he's riding in the show is a 65, which that's, that's one of my bikes. Um, Jeff, the director, and I 
we, we spent a lot of time deciding which, who was riding what bike. And so Austin's bike is a 65 Panhead.